Okay, now let's take another angle. This is the Ayurvedic approach. This is a, like at least a 3,000 year old system. Now there's several things that are really important in understanding that. So from zero to puberty, all of us tend to have a more kapha. What's kapha? Well, what do we know about kids? They're a little blubbery, they're a little watery, they get colds and they get all these earaches and all these things. These are all kind of kapha things. And the kaphas are also like the elephant. They're a little bit more stable in the relationships. They have really good memories. They hold on to things a little bit longer than other people do. And so we want to eat to balance our kapha. That's why ice cream, which is very kapha imbalancing, is really not good for kids. You know, whether it's vegan ice cream, but dairy, particularly, is really not good for kids, if you kind of get the concept of kapha. Okay? And then, the next is pitta, that's your teenager, you know, the fiery, you know, sexualized teenager kind of energy. It's the athlete, you know, uh, a lot of the pittas are the captains of the football team, or they're, you know, they're active politicians, or it's a that kind of energy, leadership energy. And that's a different diet. Now, we all go through that to some extent. We also have our basic constitution, which is a mix of kapha, pitta, vata, okay? And that's something you're born with. But I'm saying something a little different. Aside from what you're born with, um, and we have charts of how you can figure that out, and you can figure it out. When I see people, I figure out what the pulse is too. There's, well, 12 or 24 different pulses. I do 12. It, it, is that everybody's going to go through a pit of phase. Everybody's going to be a teenager. Everybody's going to have those uh, emotions and sexual energies they have to deal with. For a pitta, basically, it's going to be more amplified. Kaphas will have that also. You see what I'm trying to say here? So we have to look at our diet according to our life cycle. So as a kid, you, don't, you want to avoid the kapha aggravating foods, which we'll get to in a minute. And for pittas, we don't want to have a lot of hot, fiery foods, a lot of spicy foods. We're going to do 80% bland life food diet. Whereas the kapha needs 80% spicy. Ginger, you know, uh, asafoetida, uh, cayenne. That's for kaphas, not for pittas. Because it's going to get them out of balance. Too much fire to fire. Now, the most important one is vata. And I mentioned, I, I talk about 60, but it, these days, vata is starting. People are 45 years old. One of the most important things about vata is hydration. Okay? Uh, vata is like the goat, dry out. So you're not going to have a successful diet if your brain is shrinking, which is what happens literally, uh, and if your tissues are really drying out. It actually throws you out of balance. So one of the most important things we can do in our diet is drink more water. Now, one way, without getting too scientific about it, so to speak, is to uh, drink enough so you're urinating every one to two hours. You know, minus having a bladder infection or things like that, or prostate troubles. You know, we want to be urinating every hours. And that's going to give us our best estimate if we're hydrated. So with age, we've got to pay attention to our water. More so. See, kaphas, elephant, already too much water. So we don't have to drink so much. Now, if you're kapha, I'm, uh, I'm more kapha pitta. Okay. So I don't Really, I can go four days. I can go five days without food and water. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Okay? 
So it was easy for me to do the sun dance because I could do that. Because I'm a kapha. I have lots of water. You see. So the, the point I'm making is we have to kind of know where we are. But now, at age of 77, I'm more in the vata range. I really pay attention to water. Because I have the vata forces interacting on my kapha pitta constitution. Is that making sense, what I'm trying to say? Because we can't really understand diet if we don't get the fact that we are evolving people and we uh, are affected by the age, we're affected by the seasons, and we have to have that awareness. You know, if you live in Alaska, it's a little bit different. A lot more pittas live in Alaska. How do you know? You can see them walking around in shorts. Our kaffas aren't doing that, okay. and we'll we'll see about the weather in just a second. But balancing our vata is simply the most important aging thing we can do, anti-aging thing we can do. And from an Ayurvedic uh, point of view, we have uh, panchakarma. How many people have heard of that? Okay, well, it's an Ayurvedic treatment. It takes you know, a week. And it's a whole anti-aging thing, and it has more oil to the system. But the point is, it's designed to balance vata, which is anti-aging. That's the key. But our job is to balance our vata. One is drinking a lot of fluid. Okay. And you'll see in a moment, I'm going to go over the foods, the food types that we need to do for that. Um, the other thing is vatas dry out. They need to oil their skin once or twice a day. It makes a huge difference because vatas tend to have a very sensitive nervous system. So you want to eat foods that are going to balance that, but you also want to put oils on your skin. Sometimes, I'll, for a severe vata person, I will have them do oileated enemas and. They get immediate relief. They get immediately come in the balance. So, so do you need to do that once a week, twice a week, whatever? It's a huge thing because the colon is a vata energy place, as, as uh, are the hips. And you know, when we're doing yoga, we do a lot of work with the hips. That's to help people balance their vata as well. So there's simple things like that. Vatas dry out, so what do we need? We need more salt, not sodium chloride. Uh, the natural salts that have 82 minerals. And those salts need not to be cooked because we move from uh, covalent, when you cook it, you move from ionic bonds to covalent, which is tight and can't be absorbed well in the system. So salt, really good for you, but not table salt. Table that idea. Got it? Um, we're talking about um, things... Uh, that are raw salt, like Himalayan salt, it's mined in the, the Himalayas. It's mined. It doesn't. It's not contaminated from the air and so forth. Um, when I use the scalar salts, because it's salt from five different places in the world, so we're getting salt is the energy of the earth, right? It's crystalline energy of the earth. So, <clears throat> vata is air. What do you need? You need earth. 